Are you ready to eat? It's time for the ultimate breakfast challenge and today's heavyweight, Steakhouse 71. We are on the hunt to find the best breakfast in Disney World, but we've already hit up some amazing stops like Homecoming and Cape May Cape. So will this restaurant at Disney's original resort hotel hold up to the rest? Let's put the steakhouse to the test. We are currently at Steakhouse 71, which is an homage to 1971 when Walt Disney World first opened. On the walls, you're gonna find different pictures, paintings, and historical documents of uh, when they were building uh, Walt Disney World, different pictures of Walt Disney, early concept art, as well as just a general early 1971 aesthetic. I always say that the contemporary is always just a bit frozen in time. I know they have done refurbishments to some of their rooms. Uh, they have a new Incredibles overlay, but still, this still feels very um, nostalgic and retro without feeling too dated. It has, it's not too dated yet, in my opinion, uh, but but right now we're having breakfast at Steakhouse 71 in their main table service restaurant. There is a lounge which, which we will talk about later. But for now, you ready to eat? Yes. Let's do it. Obviously we know 1971, Steakhouse 71, it's all about, you know, Disney World first opens. Okay, so you know the year yes. Disney World opens. Yes. Trivia question. Uh, do you know the day? Yes. You do? Yes. Say it. October 1st. Hey, okay, that's a point. She gets a point. Yeah. One point. So Sarah, our amazing server, she just said, "So you're getting the sun, uh, the sunset, what are you, sunset." Oh, she comes. She's coming. Oh no, is it? Oh my gosh, it is what I thought. She said, "She did." She said, "Do you want to get the big one?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Did. The lady was so nice. It was a lot of fun with her. Yeah. This is the uh, 1971 tequila sunset. Awesome. With a big fish bowl with it. Yeah. It's vanilla bean, like a cream on top. And we also have the pepper juice mixed together with the green leaf together. Thank you so much. So it's a humorous cold brew for you. And the two big straws that's better to share. Thank you so much. Sarah, our sweet server, goes, do you want the big one? And I was like, I, I didn't know what big meant. I should, she like made us like like hand signs as if it was like gonna have like, I don't know, fun things on top. I think it's larger than my child's head. <laughs> so I got the large version. Like, apparently there are two. But the large version of the 1971 Sunset, which is Reposado tequila, tropical juices, rosemary, and house-made grenadine. Definitely a fishbowl. This is definitely something that you share with someone, uh, which obviously Fry and I will be sharing. You're not gonna drink the whole thing? <laughs> no, we will be sharing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, so that's my beverage and Fry. This is the Curious Cold Brew. It is Maker's Mark Bourbon, Joffrey's Coffee Cold Brew, Maple and Vanilla Bean Cream. Some of our food just came. This is the Waltz Prime Rib Hash. It's seasoned prime rib, fried potatoes, caramelized onions and peppers topped with a fried egg. Now, I wanted to get it the way that it came so that way you guys can see it the way that it usually comes. I am not a huge fan of runny eggs, so typically I would get this over hard. I don't know, hot take here, but uh, I just want to see. I wanted you guys to see how it came, and I'm excited to dig in. This is the seasonal pancake. The fruit of the season right now is strawberries. It came with a side. I chose bacon. You could have gotten in two different kinds of sausage, and it comes with butter and syrup. So it is a it is a vanilla yeah. based pancake. Yes, this is a, a typical pancake. Plain pancake. Strawberries on top. When we first sat down, looked at the menu, she told me the seasonal pancakes were strawberry. She also said they also have Mickey waffles here. So if you want Mickey waffles, you can get those as well. They're not on the menu. Fry. Fry. Turn around. 1971 trivia. Quick. Oh no. How much was a ticket opening day? Oh, oh. It was like free something. Free something? Three. Oh, three. <laughs> it was free. It was something. free. You just walked in. <laughs> um, I'm gonna guess 371. That was nice. It's nice energy, but no. 350. Oh, Aw, man. Close. I was close. Now we can try my 1971 Sunset, the large version. They come with uh, two straws because it is meant to share, but they come with big PVC pipe straws. <laughs> no, they're huge. They're giant straws. Smoothie straws. Smoothie straws. Yeah, that makes more sense. Oh, wow. That is... Delicious. So it's actually surprisingly really good. It's very citrusy. It's very refreshing. It reminds me of an elevated, like, and when I want to say elevated, I mean a really elevated screwdriver, which uh, a screwdriver is typically orange juice and vodka. But this is tequila, tropical juices, 
and this really uh, unique um, citrus foam that comes on top. Again, this huge, it's a fishbowl. It is made to share. If I were to finish this, I would have the best day ever. <laughs> but I wouldn't leave this hotel. <laughs> if we're not gonna share this, get the, get the smaller version. When they ask for the smaller version, get the smaller version. Definitely a fun morning cocktail. I feel like I taste a little bit of pineapple juice, a little bit of guava, like it's a nice um, blend of, of morning juices. So really solid start. I feel like I need to stir it. When you stir things, you go for a spoon? I, yeah, that's what I have. Right I don't now. know why when I stir things, I go for a knife. Oh, you know, I almost grabbed the knife, but I was like, I'm at a nice restaurant. I should grab the you spoon. You should grab the spoon, right, 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 right. Because, it, because the cream is kind of on top. Yeah, it was, and so really all I was tasting was water and bourbon. And I need well, the coffee. Not a, not a bad morning, water and bourbon. <laughs> Says the man with the giant fish bowl. <laughs> Let's try this again. Oh yeah, that's so much better. Yeah. You gotta stir it. Very bourbon forward flavor. Um, I'm not really tasting any of the maple. I can taste a little bit of the Joffrey's coffee. Not much. I kind of would hope for a little bit more of the coffee flavor. But I think this is also a nice morning cocktail if you're someone who needs your coffee in the morning like me. Uh, this is a great option when you're at a fancy restaurant and you also want like a nice adult beverage, but you still need that coffee in the morning. You can still get your Joffrey's here at Steakhouse 71. Out of curiosity, Fry looks at me and she goes, What are those two doors about? <laughs> you see those two random doors in the middle of... Uh, okay, so again, upon further research, you actually... Um, you can't have a buyout situation for Steakhouse 71. They close off this whole area, uh, and you can. Act, there's actually two separate event spaces. Or you can have one long event space or two separate event spaces. So in case you're having a birthday party or a rehearsal dinner or you're getting married, at, yeah, and you want to have a rehearsal dinner here or something like that. You get some nice pastries. You got a croissant, uh, mini muffins. You want to try the whatever's there in the middle? Sure. Let, let me know what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I think with the chocolate mini muffin. Cream cheese. Get out. Yeah. Oh, I might have the other one then. Good? It's good. Very sweet with that cream cheese. I kind of wish it was a little bit more crunchy. Mm. It's kind of soft. Yeah. And I like it. I like to hear the crunch. Yeah, a little bit. I eat yeah. These pastries, but I really like it. Oh, they're good too. It looks like a good muffin. It's a really good muffin. A great thing uh, for picky eaters as well as people who just want a traditional start to the day. Um, they got a croissant. Really nice overall pastries. Um, they are, I would say they're, they're more sweet than savory, other than the croissant, but not, not a bad uh, traditional start. So now I'm gonna dig into the Walt's prime rib hash. Uh, lots of potatoes. Uh, uh, the prime rib is actually chopped up into little cubes as well. Uh, so let's get it. Everything is really good so far. A runny egg tends to make the crispy potatoes just a tad more soft than I want it to be because I'm missing that crunch. I'm missing a little bit of that crunch in that potatoes. However, the potatoes have a really solid flavor, but really the prime rib is also really well seasoned. Um, definitely something I would get again. However, next time, just because of my personal preference, and I would like to see a little more of that crisp in the potato. Um, I would get my eggs over hard. Really solid, everything is tasty, uh, it's seasoned well, nothing is crazy overpowering. It's a lot of pepper, but nothing is, it's not, it's, no, it's not too overpowering that I'm not gonna enjoy it. Next up, we will try my side of bacon, which first off, lots of bacon. Um, it's not just like one or two pieces, it's like five. And so it's crispy, it looks crispy. It's very crispy, I've already had a piece. <laughs> you couldn't help it? I couldn't help it. Oh. That looks like the that looks like the bacon that they that they cook in the oven and not the stove, which This is so good. I love my bacon crispy. Like I'm talking as soon as it hits my tongue, it disintegrates. Yeah. That is what this is. Okay, wait, crispy or burnt? Not quite burnt, but like crispy. Very crispy, almost burnt. So sometimes at restaurants I will say, hey, can you make it extra crispy? This is great. This is exactly what I wanted from bacon. It's a nice savory side to my sweet entree. So it's gonna really complement it well. And again, there's a lot of bacon on this plate. So I'm very pleased. 
Okay, now I'm gonna try my seasonal pancakes. I got a piece of the pancake with the strawberry and the little whipped cream on top. Okay, so the little like dollops of whipped cream on top, also very cream cheese forward. It's very thick. Like you know how sometimes when you get pancakes or waffles and you pour the syrup on and then the whipped cream just kind of dissolves and like fades away. This is not doing that. It's still very much all here. So if you like cream cheese, that's a good thing. Basic vanilla pancakes, but I'm not complaining about that. I did pour syrup on it because I like the sweet stuff, but I think these would be perfectly fine without the syrup because you do have a little bit of the strawberry syrup also on top. I think these are great. This is a very simple breakfast option, but sometimes that's what you want for breakfast. If you've got a sweet tooth like me, I normally get sweet options for breakfast when I can, and I like this. And I would be curious to see at different times of the year what the seasonal pancakes are. I wish there was more strawberries. There was like five pieces. So I would like more fruit, but I don't know if that's gonna change because of this video. Now something that's different and a little bit unique for Disney table service restaurants is that they actually recommend sharing. Our server came over right away and said, hey, by the way, we recommend sharing. So uh, before even bringing out our food, brought over a lot of small plates. That way we can, uh, I can have some of her pancakes, she can have some of this hash, and also this giant fish bowl. <laughs> um, so definitely, if you see a couple things on the menu that you want to try, they definitely recommend sharing. So you can order a couple different things. Or if you are uh, kind of doing what I'm starting to do lately, which is uh, because these portions are so huge, just get one thing and share it. That's totally doable, doable as well. But they definitely recommend sharing here at Steakhouse 71 for breakfast. Because we've used our amazing sharing plates that Sarah brought over, I'm gonna try the pancakes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I've never had whipped cream like that. Before. Thick is the right word. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't say it's whipped cream. It is. It is like a. It is a softer frosting. It's a softer breakfast frosting almost. <laughs> breakfast frosting. Yes. Yeah. That's almost like a yogurt. Mm. Okay. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. You know the extra whipped yogurt cups. Yeah. That's what this reminds me of. A strawberry extra whipped yogurt. Fry is right. Uh, when they advertise seasonal pancakes and they advertise strawberries, we are expecting a tad more strawberries to go with our seasonal pancakes. Otherwise, it's just typical vanilla pancakes, which are good pancakes, but we're looking for the strawberries. Now it's my turn to try the hash. This is also really good. I'm really enjoying it. There's a lot of flavors in here. Like Sage said, you can taste the peppers, you can taste the onions. If you are more of a meat and potatoes kind of person for breakfast, this is obviously what that is. I do like more of a runny egg. I like eggs benedict for breakfast. So this is right up my alley in regards to the egg, but I can understand not everybody feels that way. But this is really good. I'm really enjoying it. For people out there, you Disney adults, just like us, it's called Walt's favorite hash, so like. How do you say no? You know, yeah. Is it really his favorite hash? I don't know. But it says it on the menu, so I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> this is how a fish bowl is meant to be shared. Yeah, see, it's it's like when it's like at a 1971 diner, except now it's not a milkshake; it's a tropical sunset. I think I would prefer a milkshake. <laughs> So we just got our check back, and for everything, it was about $107. So that's two entrees, um, a, a kind of a appetizer, like a pastry appetizer, uh, and two cocktail beverages, one being a fishbowl, being a fishbowl which was actually $28, uh, which, is, uh, which I've had Manhattans at the Enchanted, Ro at, at the Enchanted Rose uh, for $3 less that were the size of my pinky. So I'm, I'm actually a little surprised by um, the cost there. All right, so our lovely uh, server Sarah gave us some to-go cups for our drinks. And now we're gonna watch Sage pour this fishbowl into a tiny little plastic cup. So let's enjoy. <laughs> don't, kids, don't do this at home. Oh. <laughs> So we ended breakfast uh, and we actually head over to the lounge, uh, which is the great thing about the Steakhouse 71 Lounge, one of my favorite places, uh, especially for a midday park break. 
uh, coming over from Magic Kingdom, hopping over here because the lounge, uh, you, you can still grab the Stack Burger, which is one of our favorites. Uh, the, uh, Steakhouse 71 is available for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but for which you do need a reservation for. But for the Steakhouse 71 lounge, you don't need a reservation. It is first come, first serve. This is both of our first time doing breakfast. We've both been to dinner before, but we both have never done breakfast. First thoughts? I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I would recommend it to anyone. Um, I would say if you only have one chance to come to Steakhouse 71, I would tell you to do dinner or lunch. But breakfast was also really, really good. I loved everything that we had. Yeah, it's a very traditional breakfast. Uh, you're not going to find a lot of exotic flavors. A lot of, you know, it is a, it is a steakhouse. So it's very Americanized. Um, again, Walt's hash and meat potatoes, uh, meat and potatoes <laughs> pancakes, pastries. It is very... Um, very traditional so uh while the flavor profile was great it is still very very traditional so if you're looking for something a little more different or off the beaten path or something you wouldn't get at a great steakhouse breakfast at a home um you know you know try boma or, or ohana you know different things like that uh while the flavors were great it was definitely still on a safer path i would say and i do think in regards to like level <laughs> of fanciness this is more towards the bottom of course it's still like it's a nicer breakfast but you don't have to have a dress code you no. don't have to you know feel like you're going to a fancy place like it's still a nice breakfast which you know? is interesting because the later it gets into the night the fancier it becomes the fancier even though none, none of the aesthetic changes you, you know for dinner you'll you will see see people in you know nicer attire because they are having finer steaks and things like that but as far as the breakfast goes um i uh, it wasn't super loud. No. I think it's pretty kid friendly. Mm -hmm. It is important to know that if you have been to Steakhouse 71 bre breakfast before and are expecting the bottomless mimosas, that is no longer a thing. Nope. It's gone, uh, which means you're going to have to splurge on your fishbowl. <laughs> don't don't get the fishbowl unless unless you really want it. <laughs> Just share it. Just share it. Honestly, and the. 1971 sunset fishbowl thing i have had a similar drink like that at dinner in that fishbowl as well i split it between four people so yeah. it's not just for two people you can split it between four maybe six however big your party is you can easily share it with everybody but so for the 107 dollars uh would you think this is worth it for for we had two entrees Two one appetizer, one appetizer, and two beverages. I don't think it's that bad, especially for a Disney World restaurant. But also, if you're not willing to spend that much on a breakfast, you didn't have to get the pastries like we did. You didn't have to get the cocktails like we did. And like Sage said earlier, we could have probably split one of those entrees and still been full enough. You know, it's funny. Hot take here is I actually don't know if it was worth it because of the, how traditional the breakfast was. I love Steakhouse 71. I love their dinner. I love their lounge. But for as as for meat, potatoes, and pancakes for $107, now granted, we could have slid some things and we could have made it worth it. But for all the things that we got, I just don't know. I would do it the same way. I don't know if it was worth it this way. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah, think that's that's I don't fair. know if it was worth it this way. Yeah, the exact meal that we got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything that we got. So we're doing, you know, break, uh, the ultimate breakfast uh, in Disney World, right? That's that's the challenge that, that all this team is taking on. Mm -hmm. Is this the best spot in Disney World to get breakfast? I'm gonna say no. Yeah. But I also, at this point in time. I don't know what the answer is, but I don't think it's here. <laughs> That's fair. You're going to have to check back in once we've done all the breakfasts, but um, I agree with you. I don't think this is the number one spot. I think it's a great spot to get a traditional breakfast uh, with some great cocktails uh, right in, in walking distance to the Magic Kingdom. Uh, you got you, you can take your to-go cups. You've got your stuff at uh, the contemporary. Love all of that. Uh, but is this the best spot? No. Is it the best spot to go to the lounge during a midday park break? Yeah. Absolutely. Overall, solid morning. Let us know what your favorite breakfast is in Disney World. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch our video where we solve Disney World's breakfast problem. Bye.